Let's give a classic probability density function an exponentially decreasing probability function on the real numbers. And even though this is stated as a function on the real numbers, x only actually takes on positive values. The probability that wherever negative is zero. So we have a graph that looks something like this. And let's demonstrate that it is a probability density function. What do we need? Well, we need this to never be a negative. And zero isn't negative and an exponential function isn't negative. So check, got that. We need it to be a continuous, except perhaps at a finite number of values. Well, we're continuous here, we're continuous here, there's just this one point of discontinuity. One is a finite number, so check. And three, we need the integral of this function to equal one. That's going to require slightly more work. Uh, we're integrating from negative infinity to positive infinity because that's the interval this probability density function is defined on. By definition, we can, and in fact must, break this up into two integrals. And we'll go from negative infinity to zero plus the integral from zero to infinity. So from negative infinity to zero, p of x is zero. From zero to infinity, p of x is this. Now, we could do this formally. I mean, we could rewrite this as a limit and take the antiderivatives and so on, but the integral of zero is always zero. Nothing interesting happening there. So let's go over and look at this integral in more depth. The limit as k approaches infinity of the integral from zero to k. We'll take the antiderivative of this. 
the negative exponential. We evaluate it from zero to k. We stick zero in and we stick k in and we subtract when we stick zero in here we get one e to the zero is one we're subtracting a negative number hence addition And as k goes to infinity, the denominator goes to infinity. So the fraction goes to zero and that's one. So this is a probability distribution. What it represents specifically is memoryless probability. And let's try to clarify that a little. It would normally be used in the case where x is the time until some event occurs. And the probability that the event occurs is not changing as time passes. For example, X could be the number of hours before a fisherman catches a fish. Now, neglecting kind of, you know, maybe the fish are more likely to bite in the morning or whatever, neglecting details like that. This is memoryless. It's not like the fish are going to say, it's been two hours and he hasn't had a strike. Let's throw him a bow. You know, the probability that the fish bite is what it is. It's not changing just because a long time passes. In situations like that, where the event is memoryless, that is to say it's not changing, the probability isn't changing with time, we have the probability density function of the previous um, page, the graph that looks like that. 